All right. Hello, everyone. Um, it is Christina and Aria here at Strong Tower Pilates Studio. Uh, we are going to take you through a about a 30 minute video, um, Pilates video using the magic circle, everyone's favorite. Um, so basically this is going to be just a quick workout, lying on the back, seated position, and then on the belly. So no standing or anything, so it's a great way to do this um, at home if you have one of these circles. If not, I believe we have some here for sale at the studio, so you could quickly grab one and take your workouts um, at home and in between coming to the studio. Um, so I'm going to have Arya perform the exercises as I cue her and just so I'm able to explain some of the alignment of the body positions, muscles that should be activated and should be working. So we're going to get started. She is going to sit cross-legged like she is now and reach the magic circle forward in front of her and she's going to have the heels of the palms on these two pads and the fingertips reaching out long. Now she's going to squeeze the magic circle slightly, just a little bit, so that way it doesn't fall. And then with an inhale, she's going to lift the arms overhead. Mm -hmm. And then exhale, draw the circle back down in front of the chest. And again, inhale and lift. And exhale to lower. So as she's doing this, I'm going to explain kind of some things she's, she's going to be working. Number one, she's not going to hike the shoulders all the way up into the ears. Shoulders, shoulder blades have a natural lift when the arms reach overhead, but nothing too excessive to crimp into, into the ear. And also, as she inhales, she's thinking of keeping the rib cage connected at the front of the body and the belly pulled into the spine, so as to not arch the spine and have the chest protrude forward when the arms lift. Good. Keeping a nice, strong, straight back, crown of the head reaching up towards the ceiling, and she'll do one more. Inhaling, and then exhaling. And then from there, she's gonna draw the magic circle close to the chest, close to the body, with the elbows reaching out to the side. Again, shoulders are low from the ears though. Now here, with an object closer into the body, she has more range of motion. So she's going to start to squeeze the palms together, trying to connect the two pads together, kind of in line with the sternum. And she's controlling the action on the press and on the release. And muscles that are activated here, as she's probably feeling about now, even after a few repetitions, are the pec muscles, so it's your, your main chest Front of the chest muscle to squeeze in and then controlling the release as the circle separates. So she's going to do a few more all the while keeping a strong belly pulled into the spine. Good. Inhaling to press and exhale to control. And she'll do one more. Good. Now from here she's going to extend back out away from the body still heels of the palm on those pads. Now what she's gonna look for is a little more pressure as she squeezes into the pinky or the, the pinky bottom edge of her hand. And this is going to engage her lat muscles behind the body. So thinking right under the armpits along the back side of the body, that kind of downward squeeze into the pinky edge of her hand is going to help that. And you'll notice because the object, the magic circle is further away from her body, she doesn't have as much range of motion. She doesn't have that much ability to bring the circle as close together as she did when it was close to the body. So elbows are reaching out, are extended. Good. Shoulders are still dropped from the ears. And she'll do two more. And last one. Good, and then bring the circle down, just kind of rest the arms. So I'm gonna have Aria turn to face me on the mat, and her heels and toes are going to squeeze together, and she's gonna pull the toes back and press through the heels really nice and strong. She's gonna reach the circle out in front of her over the legs, 
Slight squeeze on the circle to engage lat muscles, even to help engage the core. Shoulders are gonna come down and she's stacked in the spine. Shoulders are directly over the hips and her chin is level with the floor. Now you're gonna do a roll back. So she's going to draw the belly in, drop the chin to the chest and roll back. Good, 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 good. Reach the arm just towards the ceiling and then squeezing the circle together, she's gonna to curl up the spine. Good, keep those heels low. And then stack the spine at the top. Beautiful. And she's gonna roll down again, slight squeeze on the circle, soft shoulders from the ears the entire time. Good, keeping those toes pulled back. Good, curling over the hips and then stacking tall. We'll do just a couple more, doesn't take much of these to feel it. Now this added squeeze of the circle kind of helps just bring that contraction closer to the midline, helping her to squeeze and engage the abdominals. And it helps to have that squeeze in and that reach forward with an object that you can hold. So this kind of assists a little bit in the roll up and the roll back. She's gonna come up one last time and she's gonna stay seated reaching the circle out in front. Good. So still finding a stacked spine. Slightly forward in this. Good. And reach the arms up just a little. Right there. Good. So she's going to add a twist. So we're going to do a spinal twist this time. Now her feet right now, if they were to jet one in front of the other, it means that her hips are swiveling or moving. We don't want that to happen. So she's going to take and reach the circle out in front of her. And as she exhales, she's gonna to twist to the right, keeping the circle level, not turning it like a steering wheel, keeping it nice and straight, and then unwinding back to the front. And then exhaling, twisting to the left. Good. And then inhale and draw up in the spine, even taller, good. Exhale to twist. Again, shoulders are soft from the ears. Her toes are pulling back to anchor through the heels. That's going to help keep her sit bones rooted in the mat. Couple more times to each side. And one more to the right. Last one to the left. Good. Now, she's gonna scooch up a little bit onto her mat just so she has enough room to roll back. Good, so reach the arms out and we'll go down the hard way. So, draw the belly in, chin to the chest and roll down bone by bone. Good, once she's flat, she's gonna bend the knees and plant her feet on the mat and have a little bit of space in between the feet, so about sit bone distance. Now she's gonna bring the magic circle on the inner thighs, so inside of the thighs, finding those two pads. Mm -hmm. And with the magic circle, if you've done this exercise before, you know that sometimes it's hard to kind of find that positioning, so feel free to take a moment to, to tweak that and find the perfect spot. Now her feet are still about sit bone distance, even though her knees are slightly opened, right? So we have that slight opening, releasing the squeeze just to prepare. Her hands are reaching down by her hips, shoulders are pulled back, and her tailbone is gonna stay reaching out long, creating a neutral pelvis. So she's going to squeeze the legs together, squeezing that circle in, and then releasing and letting it go. So inner thighs are adduction. There are adductor muscles bringing the inner thighs closer to the midline, closer to the body. A good way to remember that adduction is ADD. So add, like you're adding to, so you're adding to the body, bringing it into the body. And she'll do a couple more. She's smiling, so I think she's feeling this. Shaky. She's shaky, she says. <laughs> Means the muscles are working, that's good. Now on the next one, she's gonna keep and maintain the squeeze of the inner thighs. She's gonna start her pelvic tuck of the tailbone and she's gonna curl up 
keeping the squeeze on the inner thighs, meaning her knees are gonna stay over the toes. She's gonna soften bone by bone, keep that squeeze in until she releases the tailbone and then relaxes and releases the squeeze. And then she'll go again, squeezing in to engage. Keep that squeeze as she curls up. Good, and then rolling down slow and controlled and releasing at the bottom. Two more times. Squeeze in. Keep those knees reaching forward towards the edge of your mat and rolling down. We got one more. Inhale to lift. Long exhale to release. Good. All right, so we'll take the circle. Go ahead and hug your knees into the belly. Just rock from side to side. So you guys, that's a great exercise. Any type of bridging is great to, um, to stretch out the front of the body, especially hip flexors, quads, or your thighs, and to engage hamstrings and glutes, uh, which are highly neglected with our um, just tendency to sit a lot. So great way to engage there. Um, and again, working those inner thighs, super, super good. So now we're gonna work on some abduction. So kind of the reverse of what we just did. She's gonna bring her legs inside the circle, finding that same spot on the outside of the thighs now. Does that feel good? Okay, so in order for her to not lose the circle, she has to press the legs away against the sides of the circle. This is working her IT band or outer thighs. Those are your abduction. I always think of it like abducting, like kidnapping kind of thing, like you're taking something away, so you're pushing away from the body. So she's going to do that. Now with this magic circle, because it's already kind of pressed to its, its extent, um, it's not gonna be as much of a range of motion as when she pulled in. Um, so she's going to press away and then release. And you might not be able to see it very well, the motion, it's probably very subtle just from the video, but I can see from here, it's coming from a circle and kind of pressing out into an oval or an egg shape and then releasing back to that circle. Now, a really cool thing about this exercise that you might find out is you notice really fast um, the imbalances between the strength in your legs. You notice if you press deeper into the right leg versus the left or vice versa. Uh, with your goal being to balance that out and press evenly between both. She's going to do that two more times. And then last one. Good. Now I'm going to have her walk her feet just a little wider. So a little bit wider from each other. Good. Right there. Yep. So maybe a little bit wider than sit bone distance just to kind of compensate for that pressure out of the knees because we want to make sure that when we bridge lift again that the knees are tracking over the toes. So she's going to press the knees away, outer thighs out, curl the tailbone again just like she did before, keep it pressed into the circle, and then lowering down bone by bone until she releases the tailbone, she releases back to a circle. And then reaching into that egg shape, oval shape, Tuck and curl, looks good. And then rolling down, even and controlled. And we'll do just two more here. Good. And last one, she's keeping her shoulders pulled back into the mat. Her fingertips reaching long towards the heels and squeezing the buns at the very top to protect the low back. Good, and we'll take the circle down and she's again going to hug the knees into the belly and rock side to side just to release the low back a little bit. All right, so Aria, I'll have you roll onto your belly and your chest, just kind of flip over. Good. Now, Aria does not have any low back issues, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. All right, so she is going to be able to squeeze her heels and toes together on this one. If you have low back issues, try to start a little bit of distance between the heels and toes. That's just gonna make it so there's not as much of a, of a crunch in the lumbar spine. So we're gonna do two variations of a swan lift. 
the first one, she's going to reach her arms out for the edges of the pads here, long fingertips. Mm -hmm. And her forehead is going to rest on the mat. So what I want her to initially do before anything else is press the pubic bone down into the mat to protect her low back and to lengthen the tailbone out long towards her heels. Then, as she lifts the head and chest, she's gonna lift the circle up as well. Good, and make sure chin falls in just a little bit. Good, yep, and again. What we wanna watch for is that we don't crease the nape of the neck too much. So your gaze really is not going to lift that high if your upper body does not lift very high. So make sure that your, your neck and your spine is staying long, even though we're attempting to get this nice kind of curve or extension, a little bit of an arch. She's squeezing the palms together against the, cir the circle. And correct me if I'm wrong, but do you feel lat muscles? Mm -hmm. Okay. So she feels lat muscles engaged here, and she should feel upper to mid back muscles engaged to lift. And she's going to do one more. Lifting on the inhale, and exhale to lower. Good. Now I'm going to take the magic circle, and you can just rest. You can kind of shimmy and shake the hips out from side to side to release the low back. And then we're going to do the second variation of this swan lift. So I'm going to rest the circle kind of on her, her back, low back, kind of on, on the glutes. She's going to reach her hands back, palms facing towards her hips, towards her body, and they're going to press into yes, the circle. So you'll notice, and go ahead and rest the forehead down. So you'll notice her elbows have a slight bend to begin with. So you can even bend them a little bit more. Good. So as she lifts the head and chest up on an inhale, she's gonna squeeze and reach her elbows long, trying to pick the circle up off the buns and reach back and then exhale lower, setting the circle back down on her body. And then inhale, reach and squeeze in. She should feel triceps working as well. Good. This one is not easy, is it? Easy. Not easy. <laughs> but very beneficial to open up the chest and shoulders, which everyone, myself included, a lot of times we have this forward rounded shoulder syndrome. We need to pull them back, stretch the chest and the shoulders, but also strengthen the upper back muscles that get shortened in that, in that rounded position. Got to make sure your chin stays pulled in a little bit more. Good. Always remember to maintain a long back of the neck. And she'll come down. Good. And we'll finish with that one. I'll take the circle down. Reach your hands under the shoulders, palms, and press back into a child's pose. So child's pose is a great way to release any extension, any kind of back bend. Um, for a lot of us, it creates a slight flexion. Shoulders a slight flexion to the spine. So we're just kind of reversing that curvature, um, helping the spine come back to neutral. All right, so I'm gonna have you sit to face everybody and sit cross-legged. And you're gonna grab onto the circle. Now one of the pads is gonna rest on your right shoulder, like so, uh-huh, yep. And then your right palm, heel of the palm is gonna come up, good. So this is another one of those exercises that you kind of have to tweak it to find a good position. Um, sometimes it can feel good, sometimes it can not feel great on your shoulder or neck muscles. So just do, do your best in, in finding a sweet spot. Now from here, her elbow is going to bend as she tries to touch the top of her head and then release with control. So what she's working is bicep. So it should feel kind of like a bicep curl bicep contraction. So she's staying lifted in the spine and her left hand can rest where it is, can be on the hip, it can be down by the side, can be out to the side, just wherever you feel comfortable and balanced. And she'll do just a couple more here. Last one. 
and then she'll release and go to the left side. And focus her attention on the bicep. Mind to muscle connection is really, really important, you guys. It's actually, I don't know what percentage of the benefit or results that we get, but it's high. Um, as far as making sure that our mind is connecting with that muscle so it properly engages. So much of the time we can mindlessly do workouts or exercises and we feel like those muscles are not getting activated or we feel like we're not getting the results, the toning or the strength in those muscles. And a lot of times it is because of that because we're not thinking about that muscle being activated. Not to mention our breath, bringing oxygen to that muscle. Our muscles need oxygen to work, to move. A couple more. She's shaking. Last one. Nice. All right, so she's gonna release the circle and bring it over onto her right side. Um, she's gonna stand the circle up and have the circle um, face her, so the open circle face her. Again, we a lot of times work with the heel of the palm because the heel of the palm is where you have the most support and can kind of anchor in, especially into the lat muscles, which is what she's going to be doing here. So she is going to extend the right arm out straight, the left arm out to the side as well. Palm is going to face the ceiling, so outside and out. So again, we're kind of isolating this right shoulder blade and we're going to add a side bend. So as she reaches over to the right, she's going to press the circle down towards the floor. She should feel engagement of the right shoulder blade, good, or lat muscle, and then inhale to stack the spine again. So what I want her to feel is engagement on this right side, but an opening on this left side, and then releasing as the circle lifts. So again, we're trying to press it into that kind of egg shape, just enough to feel the stretch and then release with control. Something to keep in mind as well, when we do exercises, I a lot of times cue control the release um, because it is proven that a lot of the results in strength building to the muscle comes from the resistance um, instead of the actual push down or the pull. So this muscle is pulling, yes, and that's strengthening the muscle, but the resisting of it coming back into an extended state is also part of the exercise. And she'll do one more on this right side bend, opening up the left rib cage, and then coming back to a straight spine, and then just picking the circle up and bringing it over to her left. And same thing, left hand out, right arm out, palm faces up, and as she side bends, she reaches up and over, opening the left side of her body, and then resisting as she picks the spine back up nice and tall. And all the while, you guys, she is holding the belly in to not overwork the hip flexors, keeping the rib cage pulled in, inhaling and exhaling as she does the movement, keeping the breath flowing. And she'll finish up with one more. All right, so you guys, that was pretty much it. I don't even think that was 30 minutes. So that's all I had planned for a little magic circle workout. Thank you, Ms. Aria. Um, we had fun, she worked, mm -hmm. I didn't, but hey. <laughs> Um, come to class, come see us, do this workout at home if you have a magic circle. If not, stop in, pick one up.